Hey guys, it's Cameron here with Emerson Property Management. Every week I bring you tools, tactics, strategies, lessons I've learned, things have helped me build up a size on real portfolio in about two years and now manage that portfolio. Today I'm taking a question from a subscriber, Lady Boss. Lady Boss asked or said, hey Cameron, great video, nice haircut. Question, what do you think about Airbnb? I would like to start a business in this area and was wondering what you think about it and Airbnb arbitrage. Lady Boss, this is a great question because I see it. I see it a lot. You guys know this is all done live. Um, I see this, this question a lot. Or I, I know there are certain areas where um, this Airbnb stuff comes in quite a bit. And... Um, you know, there's places like Nashville, Tennessee, there's places like, um, you know, coastal cities that Airbnb is phenomenal, makes a lot of money. There's even places like Gatlinburg, Tennessee, uh, that, um, that are more destination cabin in the woods where people are making a killing in Airbnb. So do I like it? What do I think about Airbnb as a strategy? Personally, I don't like it. And there's a re the, the main reason is it's so, so, so dependent upon local ordinances. Now, what does that mean? Well, an HOA can come in. If you're in a property with an HOA, an HOA can come in and shut you down. They can say no more Airbnbs in this area or no Airbnbs under 30 days or no Airbnbs under two weeks or six months or whatever. So it's very rare it does happen, but it's very rare for areas to say no rental properties at all. It does happen, don't get me wrong, but usually that's established ahead of time. It's usually older established neighborhoods that don't want any any renters in the in the area. So you usually don't have that as a big change. You know, if they allow rentals in one area, they're not, it's not really gonna change. It's kind of a, you know, it's going to have rental, uh, long-term rentals, as in 12 month leases or more. Um, so the risk is way less in a 12 month lease or more, a long-term tenant. It's more with these short-term tenants. Now, can you make a lot of money? Yes. Um, but who knows, you know, I have some friends in Nashville who, you know, were making great money on Airbnb and then things changed and they had to like, I mean, your, your value totally changes of your property as well, because remember your value of your property, what you can sell and buy at, or what you would sell it at, and what you're willing to pay for, or someone's willing to pay for it, is based on the income. And if you have a two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar house, but you can make fifty grand a year on it doing Airbnb, well, now you will pay three or four hundred thousand for, it, or four or five hundred thousand. So, um, sir, to to bring this all back around, I don't like them. I think you can make a lot of money if that's one of your plays where um, you know you wanna buy a vacation home and Airbnb it on the side until it's paid off and then you have your vacation home or you Airbnb it while you're paying for, uh, to, just to give you a couple weeks or maybe a month or two a year in some destination spot, that's different. But for long-term wealth building, uh, I don't know if there's much be better, any other better avenue than just long-term rentals. You know, 12 month leases, stuff like that. I know people make a lot of money in the Airbnb stuff and I'll get a lot of flack for that, but it's just, there's too much risk. Now, there might be areas that are only all Airbnb and that's it. And the, you know, they have enough power in the area to command the fact that that's not gonna change. Just like an older established neighborhood is gonna command no renters in here. So I would find those areas, but as far as a long-term strategy, I just don't see it. There, it's, it's so operationally intensive your property management is gonna be 20, 30, 40%. I've heard crazy numbers of gross rents because you're turning over every three, four, five days, week, two weeks, whatever. So you're getting a cleaning crew in, you have damage to, you gotta furnish them. So you have extra upfront costs. You know, that stuff breaks, you get stains on things, stuff like that. So, you know, I don't think it's as easy as everybody makes it out to be. And like I said, I think there's more risk uh, with or local ordinances and people getting together wanting to kind of poo-poo on Airbnb or VRBO and everything. So it depends on what your goal is. It really just depends. For a long-term wealth strategy, I don't like it. If it's a one-off, 
you're, you're, you've set yourself up and this is just a play so you can have your vacation home paid for, I don't think it's a bad strategy. But as far as buying a bunch of Airbnbs, people make money doing it. It's just not my strategy. I don't think it's a great long-term wealth strategy. So I hope that was helpful. Lady Boss, if it was, let me know. If it wasn't, let me know below. I know you've been commenting and following for several years now, so I appreciate it. And if there's anything else you guys have questions, comments, concerns about, or something I said that didn't make sense or you want me to elaborate on, just uh, comment below or shoot me a message and let me know. Thanks, y'all.